Hi everyone, it's Lindsay with High Altitude Astrology. Today I'm bringing you a video about Mercury entering the sign of Cancer. And I have the chart up on the screen. You can see that here on May 28th at 12.09 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, Mercury has moved to zero degrees of Cancer. <clears throat> and Mercury's going to be in Cancer for the month of June and the month of July until August 5th when it moves into the sign of Leo. And the reason it's going to be in Cancer for that length of time is because there is going to be a retrograde of Mercury. And that's going to happen when Mercury reaches 14 degrees of Cancer on June 17th, and it will retrograde back to five degrees of Cancer when it will then turn direct on July 11th. And Mercury moves into shadow, which is the degree to which it will retrograde back to, which again is five of Cancer. So it enters five degrees Cancer on June 2nd. So that's when the shadow period starts for Mercury retrograde and it completes on July 26th when it clears 14 degrees of Cancer again in its direct motion. So a couple of months of Mercury in the sign of Cancer. So Mercury has to do with our thinking function, logic, being rational, communicating. It also relates to analyzing. It relates to anything to do with technology like computers or emailing, that sort of thing uh, relates all to the mercurial function. Another aspect of Mercury is that it's considered the messenger of the gods. And so its function really is to help us in some way connect to our higher self and bring information through that helps us to make logical, rational choices and decisions. Uh, so Mercury has this kind of um, quality to it. it it's, it's, it's the messenger of the gods. It connects us to information that is useful for us to make decisions. Now, when Mercury is in the sign of Cancer, what happens is, is that our rational function is then connected or expressed through the sign of Cancer, which is actually more of an intuitive energy because Cancer deals with water, uh, which is the emotions and the feelings. So Cancer is ruled by the moon, and when you think of the moon and all of its changing phases, that gives you a, an impression of what cancer is like. It, it has to do with the way that we feel and the changing moods of how we feel. But really, at a deep level, it's our ability to express how we feel. So with Mercury in the sign of cancer for the next couple of months, we're really going to get in touch with being able to communicate from a place of how we deeply feel. I want to read from Esoteric Astrology, Torgny Jansen's book, and I want to read a little bit of what he has to say about the sign of cancer. He says it's the sign of motherhood, of emotions and sensitivity, and the care of the home. The great test you face is the building of your own home. You can either build a home that gives warmth and love to everyone or build a wall behind which you isolate yourself from the rest of the world. So there he's talking about what you might typically hear about cancer energy is that it, it like the crab, that is the symbol for its sign, it can retract into its shell and isolate itself from the rest of the world, especially when it's feeling vulnerable or feeling uh, unheard, like sensitive. 
He goes on to say, if you search for security in external objects, you will close the door so that love can't enter. You close the door to your own heart. Your lesson is to learn that material possessions are to be used, but they have no value in themselves. If your source is the love inside you, the home that you build will give light and shelter to everyone. The difference lies in the reasons behind your building. You are constructing a home that provides a safe, harmonious environment, one that gives warmth and comfort to others. Or are you merely collecting things because you have a desire to own objects and find security in material possessions? The important issue here is your sensitivity to the needs of other people and your reactions to them, as opposed to the simple collection of items on the basis of your own desire for material possessions or your unawareness of the needs of others. To give to people in accordance with their true needs is the mature cancer's natural way of reacting. Helping others by satisfying one's own needs, on the other hand, is typically the immature cancer expression. One must always be altruistic in order to give. Giving should never be a compensation for one's own unsatisfied need for love. Respect yourself and try to discover your own and other people's needs and your life and home will be filled with light. A harmonious home provides an environment where other people find warmth, love, and happiness. If, on the other hand, you own for the sake of owing, you must live simultaneously with the fear of losing your possessions. This fear will enslave and paralyze you, making you conservative and insecure. You must learn to use the material world, but, not, but at the same time, you must realize that it's a tool and not a goal in itself. So you get this feeling about cancer because he's talking about how the material world creates comfort or create security would be the better word for cancer. And so he's warning of the challenge of cancer that if you're trying to collect things, people in your life in order to fill some need for security, then it may create problems where there's just kind of this constant void that's never actually feeling satisfied. And I think what he's suggesting is that there needs to be uh, a, a real true uh, expression of love uh, that comes from really feeling secure within ourselves, first and foremost, that the, then we can give without expecting in return. I think that's one point that he's trying to make. Uh, he's recognizing that the material world has a function, but again, it can't be a substitute for the true um, inner security that we find within ourselves. So this is a little bit about the cancer energy and what I feel we can uh, expect with the thinking function operating through the Cancerian archetype is, especially uh, when we go through the retrograde, is that we're going to be needing to uh, perhaps have conversations with people close to us because cancer is about our family and our roots and where we come from. It's also about the people closest to us that we feel uh, that we trust and that we value and that we uh, you know, share ourselves with. So this could really just in general be a deepening of our communication with others, especially those very close to us. A time where we get in touch with what we feel more deeply, which I think is relevant because there are some other things going on in the chart right now that are going to require that we know how we feel. And so this Mercury through Cancer is going to help us uh, get in touch in the midst of all of these other changes that are occurring astrologically. And then, of course, when Mercury does go retrograde, which happens again, on the 17th of June at 14 degrees, and then uh, moves direct on the 11th of July at five degrees. Mercury retrograde typically is a time where the Mercury function tends to not operate as fluidly. 
and that's when you stereotypically get a lot of the problems that mercury retrograde tends to highlight which can be breaking down of things dealing with technology or computers or printers uh, an email uh, not being received we don't understand why uh, uh, us forgetting the time of an appointment and we end up being late or early uh, these are kind of typical mercury retrograde the communication and the rationalization gets a little bit of its wires uh, crossed but What's nice about Mercury being in Cancer during this retrograde is that then we end up needing to rely on our intuition uh, more. And that is definitely a Cancerian quality is, is tuning in and knowing what it is we really feel. And again, this is going to be important because there are some other um, larger astrological happenings going on that we uh, will need to know how we feel in order to navigate those. So let's move forward and look at how Mercury is being aspected during its transit through Cancer. And one of the interesting things that, ha that is happening with Mercury and Cancer uh, is going to be its sextile to Uranus, and that's gonna happen three times during Mercury's travel through Cancer. And Uranus, here you can see, is at eight degrees of Taurus on June 5th, which is the first time these two make a connection. And they're making a sextile, which is a 60 degree angle. And Uranus is all about revolution and change. And uh, it can sometimes bring sort of a shocking energy because it's like all of a sudden we realize that things are different or things need to be different. Uh, especially in the sign of Taurus, uh, this is Uranus has been in Taurus for about a year and a half, and it'll be in this sign for another six years. So it's moving slowly through the sign of Taurus. But Taurus is also related to our material possessions and this uh, this aspect of what it is we value in life, uh, whether that's a, a person, a, a place, a thing, uh, money, and so with Uranus in this sign, it is creating a big uh, change to the things that we value collectively on a material level, uh, as well as on a personal level. And so what Mercury in Cancer, sextiling Uranus in Taurus is going to be bringing up for us is perhaps us getting more in touch with that Mercury and Cancer and the ability to communicate about some of these new values that might be coming up for us at this time. And because there's so much change going on with the COVID-19 pandemic and some of the questions, the deeper questions that it's afforded some of us the opportunity to begin to look at in our lives is, you know, what, what, am, what am I really, uh, what do I value in my life? Where do I want to focus my attention? What's important to me? And this Mercury in Cancer is creating a harmonious angle with Uranus, helping us to wake up more to that, I, those ideas, and then to be able to fluidly uh, share about them with those close to us in our lives. So that's a positive energy that's happening with Mercury moving through Cancer. The next energy that's gonna happen is the next day on June 5th, Mercury's gonna make a square to Chiron and Aries. And this too is gonna to happen three times while Mercury is moving through Cancer. Chiron, the wounded healer, Aries, self-assertion. Square means there's a challenge, there's tension that is being brought to the surface or that needs some type of action taken in order to resolve. So in this dynamic, the way that we might experience it at first, and again, because we're gonna have three opportunities to work with this energy while Mercury's in Cancer, we will kind of begin to get the feel of what it's about and what might need to occur as a result. But Chiron in, in Aries is basically asking us to, to wake up or to become aware of where we might be coming from a wounded place where we don't feel like our value or our opinion counts. Because 
if Chiron's the wound and Aries is our self-assertive ability, there's, there's a problem there. You know, we, we feel like there's something wrong with us. We don't feel our value. We don't feel our worth. We don't feel we can self-assert. And so uh, the, the healing opportunity is in the process of working with that energy um, and, and perhaps working with various um, modalities. I mean, a Chiron was a healer. And so anything that we can do at this, during this time to help um, boost our confidence or to, to work with those, those wounds that might be challenging our confidence, then we can step into the, the wounded healer energy where we then do recognize our value. We do recognize our worth. We are confident in taking steps forward. And then we can actually share that energy with other people and help other people do that as well. But in this dynamic, what could be happening is that we just may be feeling with that Mercury and Cancer squaring that Chiron and Aries that we have, we're having a hard time expressing ourselves. Uh, maybe we're uh, falling back into some of those more challenging Mercury and Cancer uh, energies where we want to pull in and we want to retreat and we don't want to express ourselves. Uh, that could be one expression of this dynamic. And so we're going to have to work a little bit harder at remembering you know, our, our value and remembering that what we feel is important and, and communicating it is also very important. Then we get the retrograde and that happens on June 17th at 14 degrees of Cancer. And again, the retrograde starts the process of reviewing, revisiting, revising. That's all Mercury retrograde uh, and energy. That's what the retrograde does. It allows us to go over things again, review things again, reconsider things. So what's going to happen is it's going to go through this retrograde in the sign of Cancer, and we're going to be able to bring a more feeling-oriented a perspective into whatever it is that the retrograde is bringing up for us. Again, because it's cancer, it could be our relationships with those people closest to us. It could be relationships with our family. Uh, those are cancerian themes that the Mercury and retrograde might be bringing up. But in general, it also just might be bringing up this, this, this connection to needing to review how we express ourselves with others through that cancerian nature are we what is our you know where is our nurturing capability at where is our our loving uh capability at you know what's the state of it and um you know what do we you know we need to reflect on it perhaps and understand uh you know wh where you know where we're at with our mercury and cancer energy personally so that retrograde is going to happen uh, for a period of time. And while Mercury is retrograding, we will get another sextile between Uranus and Mercury on June 30th. We will get another square between Mercury and Chiron on July 1st. And then we are going to have Mercury retrograde at six degrees of Cancer squaring Mars that has now moved in the sign of Aries uh, at six degrees. So this will be an interesting day, July 8th, because any Mars Mercury dynamic could uh, bring up tensions in our communication because Mars is all about self-asserting and war and uh, courage. You know, this is the, the male archetype of Mars, the god of war. And it's in its home sign of Aries. So it's feeling very confident. It's feeling very strong. And so what can happen is that there could be a little bit of impulsiveness when it comes to our communicating on this day. Although with Mercury retrograde, so it's already feeling a little debilitated, and in the sign of Cancer, where it's connecting more to its emotions and feelings and intuition, 
uh, it would just be a day to kind of watch out for really kind of maybe overly emotional communication. That might be one expression of it where we're sort of impulsively responding from a very emotional place and we're not giving ourselves enough time to really slow down and like think about what we're saying. Uh, but again, squares do bring up tension that needs to be resolved. So this could also be a day where we are feeling more empowered to express our, our feelings uh, or where we're, again, at this reviewing time under, you know, feeling more empowered to kind of understand more about what it is that we are actually feeling on an emotional level, you know, gaining that understanding and that information at that time and being open and, and feeling confident in, in, in accepting, accepting that for ourselves. All right, then what we're gonna see is Mercury moving direct. And that's gonna happen on July 12th when Mercury is at five degrees of Cancer. Then Mercury will square Chiron this last time on July 21st. It will sextile Uranus one more time on July 22nd. And then it squares Mars for the second time, but this time Mercury is direct. And I would suggest or think at this time, with Mercury being direct at this point, after having you know gone through that review process, that this actually might be a day on July 22nd where we can thoughtfully have powerful communication around whatever it is we've been reflecting on that may now need to be spoken clearly about based on what we've learned that we really feel. And, and, and this could bring a lot of confidence with Mars in Aries to be able to express ourselves at this time. Again, with the caveat of being aware of not being overly emotional to how we present our case because that's uh, what that Mars and Aries could do. It could really kind of just uh, get us really frustrated, you know, and, and that doesn't necessarily help us um, resolve any, you know, difficulties with others. And then as Mercury's ending its time through Cancer, it's going to make an opposition to Jupiter on July 30th. It's also going to make a trine to Neptune on July 30th. It's going to make an opposition to Pluto on August 1st, and finally an opposition to Saturn on the uh, 3rd of August. And with Mercury and Cancer opposing all of this energy in Capricorn, this is going to kind of be the the pinnacle of the Mercury and Cancer uh, energy where there really will be an opportunity to kind of get things out with others because oppositions often do that. They relate to relationships. And so when, when Cancer opposes, excuse me, when Mercury and Cancer opposes Jupiter in Capricorn, this actually could be bringing the the ability to to see maybe where um, there needs to be a balance between how we feel emotionally and the ability to communicate it with some of our pers larger perspective or larger plans, um, the the desire to grow, the desire to expand in the sign of Capricorn, in a very kind of grounded, earthy, practical way. And, and so there needs to be some balance found here. So this could be a day where, you know, maybe there's just a lot of, lot of optimism and a lot of ideas uh, where we really need to make sure that we're tuned into our intuition, we're tuned into our emotional self, because Jupiter can be so expansive in its vision that uh, we, we have to have a grounded uh, perspective in how we sort of e execute. But Jupiter in Capricorn does bring more groundedness, 
but again, this would just be a, a day to be aware of that um, sort of really giving over to really big ideas without thoroughly thinking them through and using our intuition is a good way to navigate that. And then the Mercury opposing Pluto, uh, that is going to be just an intense energy because Pluto is all about transformation and looking deeply into things and uncovering things. And so with this Mercury opposing the Pluto, this could just be a very revelatory time where uh, we, we see things more clearly and then we're actually able to uh, speak from an intuitive, uh, an intuitive place about how we really feel about things. The, the challenge here is to not get caught up in, in emotional games where we want to try to manipulate or control because those can be Plutonian energies. Uh, in, in an opposition, if we're feeling so emotional about something, there could be a tendency to want to use the Plutonian power to kind of get our way or, or try and control something rather than going through the, the, the deep process of, of transformation and letting go that Pluto can also bring. And finally, the opposition from uh, Mercury to Saturn can really bring kind of a maturity to the way we think and communicate with others and an acceptance and a, a moving forward with a more grounded and, a, and a mature um, path forward, uh, taking on the responsibility of whatever uh, changes you know, need to be uh, embraced and, uh, and implemented. Mercury opposite Saturn, a day where it's important to try not to get overwhelmed with the emotions because sometimes um, Saturn's view can be very limited uh, and we can tend towards, you know, feeling a little uh, like we can't see the forest through the trees. And especially with Mercury in Cancer, providing more connection to our emotions on that day, it could just be a you know a, a day where it would be really good to just kind of put our nose to the grindstone and focus on things that need to get done as opposed to indulging our emotional experience too much and then finally mercury moves into leo on august 4th okay so what also is happening at this time while mercury is moving through the sign of cancer and for the first week that it's moving uh, retrograde is that venus is also in retrograde. You can see it here at 17 degrees of Gemini. Not to mention the fact that Saturn, Jupiter, and Pluto are also retrograde. So there's a lot of reviewing happening right now within the various planets. And what's going to happen is that when Mercury goes retrograde itself on July 17th, Venus again is still retrograde. And then finally, Venus will go direct on June 25th about a week into Mercury's retrograde. So this is kind of happening in the background of Mercury moving into the sign of Cancer and then for the first part of Mercury's uh, retrograde. And I think it's important to point out because Venus is about relationships. Venus is about money. Venus is about our values and also creativity. But with its retrograde, it's really been bringing up the, the question mark in our lives about what do we value? Who do we want to be with? Uh, what, what do we want to focus on in order to uh, create financial stability for ourselves? And with Mercury moving into the sign of Cancer during this time, with uh, Venus still retrograde for the first week of Mercury's uh, retrograde through Cancer, it's going to help us tap into this Venus retrograde cycle a bit more deeply and really ask us to focus on our emotions and our feelings in relationship to what we think. And that will be a key uh, through, this, uh, through the end part of this Venus retrograde is to tap more deeply into our uh, our communicating from our deepest feelings 
in order to help guide us uh, through the Venus retrograde time. All right, so I want to end with a little bit more reading from the esoteric astrology, Torgny Jansen writing, where he talks about Cancer frequently identifies herself with the masses. The higher aspect of this characteristic is sensitivity to the needs of the masses and thus an ability to better understand and aid them. The lower aspect, however, reveals itself as a crushing lack of independence in which the individual always follows public opinion, blindly imitating a group and its leader. If you're a sensitive cancer, you will notice the deeper, truer needs of others and through your strong empathy, you will understand how to help them. The lesson to learn here is that in giving up your search for outer security based on fear, you can transform this desire into a search for the inner peace that is a result from true empathy. True empathy implies that you can identify with others and effectively express your compassionate insight. You will then feel a stronger and stronger love for all of life, including your own. In this love, you will find everything you are longing for, friends, security, and a purpose for and meaning to life. So he's talking about the, the in general, the, the archetypal sign of, of cancer, but he's talking about how cancer operates and that when we can really have empathy and understanding for ourselves and for others, that's when that sort of need to create security by gathering everything around us subsides and we feel more secure uh, within ourselves. And I think this is a wonderful message as to how we can use this Mercury and Cancer time to relate to other people. We can bring in that uh, empathy in our communication in order to create a more harmonious communication with others and to create an experience within ourselves where we're, we're coming to our communication with others from a place of love for ourselves and for others and therefore are not feeling a lack that needs to be filled by somebody else. And I think that's going to be an important feature to the retrograde as well that we can be exploring in our relationships with other people. And hopefully come through this uh, Mercury and Cancer time with a renewed connection to the Cancerian archetype and to feeling more secure within ourselves and in our ability to communicate uh, with others around us from a, a, a place of, of empathy and of love. Thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. If you like my channel, please subscribe and I will see you at the next video. Take care.